Huh? No, I didn't. I just my my uh, mind's broken. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, the first first important thing when you're given anything with law signs, law triangles, then or law signs, law cosines, the first and most important thing that I want to do is go ahead. What's wrong? You okay. Okay. Is to just create a triangle. And once I go ahead and create the triangle, I want to go ahead and label all of the parts. So I'll just say A, B, C, A, C, and B. And I just label, plug in my information to find all the missing parts of the triangle. So I do 5, here we have 4, and here's 1. Now obviously, ladies and gentlemen, I know my triangle is not proportional, right? I probably should have drawn a nice little um, obtuse triangle, something that looks like this, right? This probably would have made a little bit or a little bit more sense if you draw a triangle like that. But in reality, guys, is you're just drawing a picture, and that's and that's really the most important thing, Jade, um, that you want to be able to do. This is a triangle that would make more sense because you know that that's going to be your smallest side, that's going to be larger, so it's going to be an obtuse triangle. Um, however, it just create a triangle. Don't get caught up on what the, exactly the triangle looks like, because you can always go back and redraw the triangle later. So does anybody remember? What, so now we understand that we can't use a lot of signs because we don't have a ratio, right? We don't have a ratio of a sine length to its angle. So therefore, we're going to need to use the law of cosines. Now remember, I wrote down the law of cosines last class period, and then I gave you, you know, three different options. It all really depends on the angle. Does anybody remember, if you want to raise your hand, on how I said which law of cosines we should choose? Yes. Which formula should we use? We want to use the formula that has the angle where it's going to be the largest in the triangle, right? So based on the side lengths, we know that the angle, the largest angle is going to project to the longest side, correct? So when looking at this, you guys can see that B would be our largest <coughs> angle, correct? Correct? OK, so going back to knowing your formula, which will be provided, but the law of cosines is B squared equals A squared plus c squared minus 2 times a times c times the cosine of b. Okay. Again, you will be provided the formula um, for your test, but you should at least know that and know how to rewrite it for different forms. Now, we just plug in our information that we understand. So I have 5 squared equals a squared plus c squared minus 2 times a times c times the cosine of b, which we do not know. Okay. Now let's do everything step by step. 5 squared is 25 equals 1 plus 16 minus 8 times cosine of b. Please remember, you cannot subtract the 16 and the 8. That 8 is being multiplied by the cosine, so you can't subtract those. So I have 25 is equal to 17 minus 8 times the cosine of b. Subtract 17 on both sides. So therefore, I have a 8 equals uh, negative 8 cosine of b. Is everybody following my math, my inverse operations so far? Then I just divide by negative 8 on both sides. Divide by negative 8. So I have negative 1 equals cosine of b. So I take inverse cosine of negative 1. And I get 180 degrees. So if my one angle is going to be equal to 180 degrees, then obviously that's not going to be a triangle, right? You can't fit any other angles inside of there. Which one is this? Five and four. Yeah, you just be able to write not not does not produce a triangle. Actually, let me check real quick. Let me just check the back of the book, what they had. Yeah, no triangle. Uh, I should have looked at it. Yeah, so you just say no triangles possible. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have assigned that. 